Good morning. Our service starts this morning based on the verse from Isaiah 11.1. 1, there shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. Our gathering hymn is Holy Child Within a Manger. player was on a race again this morning. Sorry about that. <laughs> a little fast. A uh, few announcements this morning. There is a council meeting for Kirkabo after the service today, so we will be gathering to, uh, to talk about the, next, the coming month and annual meeting in the, in, after the first of the year and all that good stuff. Um, I will um, let you know there's a cute little Christmas tree on the back table back there. Um, we're calling it our heads, fingers, and toes tree. We are looking for donations for hats and for gloves and for socks uh, to put into the, the food pantry and stuff for those in need now that the weather's getting cold. So head, fingers, and toes, hats, gloves, or socks. So if you can help with that, that would be wonderful. Next Sunday, we are back here again at 9 o'clock because they will be doing the 11 o'clock service will be the Christmas program over at Nora. So you might have to hit both services because it'll be fun to see the kids. Um, and then for the 11 o'clock service after the kids program, they're doing a potluck at Nora as well. So that will be fun. Today we have confirmation here at Kirkabo after the 11 o'clock service. Um, they're baking cookies over at Nora after their 11 o'clock service. So the church is kind of busy this morning. So confirmation will be right back here at Kirkabo and then baking cookies at Nora. And then Wednesday night of this week, December 15th at 6.30, we will be blessed with the Christmas cantata from uh, the Lutheran Church of Good Shepherd in Moorhead. I ask that you uh, spread the word, bring your friends, bring your neighbors. I want to see this church packed so we can let them know how wonderfully excited we are that they could come and share their cantata with them. Um, they've had me practicing a couple weeks now with them so that I can sing with them because it's just kind of fun to be with them again. I haven't sang with them for years and stuff. So it was fun that I've heard it. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and as I re remember telling you at the last time they came, most of these people that are in this choir have sang in the Concordia Choir um, in the years that they were in college. So they're, they're very professional and, and it, they just do a wonderful job. So that's exciting. Uh, Christmas Eve will be here soon, Friday, December 24th. It'll be a 7 o'clock service, candlelight service over at Nora. I need help. I need people to read. I need people to sing or play the piano or do special music or whatever. So if you are going to be in town on Christmas Eve and can help me out, please reach out to me and let me know so I can find a place for you in the service as well. And then just a reminder, the last Sunday in December, December 26th, we will not have services Many people are still celebrating with their families on that Sunday, so we just decided that we would allow everybody to have that time with their families and no services on December 26. I think that's all the announcements. Did I miss anything, everybody? Anybody? Okay, I think we got it. All right, let us begin with our invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. For centuries, the church has used through Advent a series of anaphones or responses to prepare our hearts to celebrate Christ's birth. These seven responses, names and titles of our Savior, are often, often called the O Antiphons, familiar to us in the hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. So as we light our third candle in a few minutes about on our Advent wreath, in praise to Christ, who is the root of Je Jesse and the son of David, the Lord said to David, I will raise your offspring after you, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. 
That's from 2 Samuel 7, verses 12 through 13. The prophet Isaiah said, There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. O flower of Jesse's stem, you have been raised up as sign for all peoples. Kings stand silent in your presence. The nations bow down in worship before you. Come, Lord Jesus, root of Jesse, son of David, and rule over us as your king. This morning we will light the third candle, the candles of hope, peace, and t- today we will light for joy. This candle reminds us that we have reason to be joyful even in the midst of strife. It's right over here, Sonia, right over there. We remember that the angel proclaimed Christ's birth as good news of great joy to all people, and we celebrate today with joyful hearts and commit ourselves to spreading that joy throughout the world and all the world around us. At this time, we will sing, O come, Emmanuel. our sins to God and ask for forgiveness. Almighty God, you kept your promise to send forth the son of David, a shoot from the stump of Jesse to save us. You keep your promises, but we do not keep ours. Although we promise to remain faithful to you, we often turn against your will to follow our own sinful desires. We listen to the tempting voices of the world around us instead of listening to your word. We sin against you in every day in our thoughts and words and actions. Have mercy on us and forgive us. God in his mercy sent forth his son to be our savior, born into the royal line of David. Jesus laid down his life as the perfect sacrifice for our sins. He was raised in glory and now rules over us as our king. I announce to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords, lead us to live as your redeemed people and citizens of your kingdom. And let us pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, you promised David, the son of Jesse, that one of his descendants would reign forever. When the right time came, you fulfilled your promise, and a living shoot grew from the stump of Jesse. A branch sprang up from his roots. Jesus, our Lord, was rightly called the son of David. He is the royal son, the promised king, who rules over our lives now and for all eternity. By the power of your spirit, make us willing servants and subjects of our king. Lead us to walk in love, just as Jesus walked, to be witnesses for him and to welcome others into his kingdom so that they too might worship him as King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Did somebody grab the readings for today? Thank you. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah 11, verses 1 through 6. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. 
And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what he, his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear. But with righteousness, he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist and faithfulness the belt of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together, and a little child shall lead them. The epistle reading is from Romans 15, 8 through 9, and 12 through 13. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness, in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. And again Isaiah said, the root of Jesse will come, even who, he who arises to rule the Gentiles, in him will the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand if you are able. Our gospel reading this morning comes to us from Matthew 1, verses 18 through 25. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found to be a ch with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him as a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and she will name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The people of Israel were once ruled by God through his appointed prophets and judges, but finally there came a time when Israel wanted an earthly king, a flesh and blood king, just like the king of other nations. Samuel had been leading Israel as, as its judge, but as he aged, he made his sons judges. And the sons ended up seeking their own good and their own profit. So at that point, the people demanded a king. Through Samuel, his judge and prophet, God warned the people, having a king is not going to be what you think. A king will take your sons and daughters into his service. He will take your crops and livestock for himself. You will be slaves. Yet still the people demanded a king, so God gave them a king, Saul. And for a while things went well, but in time Saul disobeyed the, disobeyed the Lord and the kingdom, and the kingdom was torn from his hand. His own son would not follow him as king. And instead, God gave Israel a new king, a shepherd boy named David, the youngest son of his family. Anointed by Samuel to be the king, David first served in Saul's house, led troops in battle, and eventually came to wear the crown. God gave David his chosen king rest from the enemies and promised that one day one of his descendants, a son of David, would rule over the house of Israel forever. David's son Solomon would not be that forever king. Solomon was great and wise and so wealthy that during his reign, silver was said to be as common in Jer Jerusalem as stone. Everything Solomon had was gold. He built the beautiful temple in Jerusalem that housed the Ark of God. 
Although ruling well, went well at first, Solomon strayed from his faith and began to follow the false gods of his many wives. Solomon's son, Rehoboam, ruled as a tyrant, and under his reign, Israel was split into two kingdoms, Israel in the north and Judah in the south. Although some kings of David's royal line were faithful, others were not, and they led the people into idol worship. In time, Israel and Judah fell to their enemies, and his people were taken away into exile. The family tree of Jesse, the royal line of David, was nothing more than a ruined stump. But in the midst of ruin and exile, God, through the prophet Isaiah, gave his people a word of hope. A living shoot, a growing fruit, bearing branch, will grow from that ruined stump of Jesse. God's spirit will rest on this new and fruitful son. He, unlike Saul and the other kings, will rule justly in righteousness. This living, fruitful king will uphold the meek and the oppressed and, with a breast, destroy the wicked. Like the people of Israel, we often go our own ways. We often reject the rule of God in our own lives, don't we? We don't usually demand a king to reign over us, of course. Instead, we want to rule our own hearts and our own lives, to hold sovereign power over our own decisions. We do not want the will and the word of God to rule us. We may not seek other kings, but we seek and we bow down to other gods, wealth, possessions, popularity, influence, power, the list goes on and on. Israel wanted to be like other nations, and we want to be like those of the world around us. We listen to the tempting voices that we hear. But God's merciful promise to Israel is a promise for us as too. Advent is a season of preparation, but it is also a season of repentance. We acknowledge our sins and our need of the promised Savior, the fruitful, fruitful branch who was born among us in Bethlehem, the living branch of Jesse, who is also the root of Jesse. His source of life is the source of life for us as well. The righteous branch of David's family tree will bring hope and salvation to Israel, and not only Israel, but to all the nations, to all the Gentiles, those who are not descended from Abraham. The living branch brings hope to you and me. As the Apostle Paul wrote, the root of Jesse will come even he who arises to rule the Gentiles, in him with the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you all with joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may bound, be bound in hope. The season of Advent is about hope, and about hope fulfilled. The living branch of David's family tree is named in Scripture. The Lord is our righteousness. We know him better by the name given to Mary and Joseph by the angels, a name that means God saves. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Amen. The hymn of the day is, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Thank you. 
collect our offering when we do our communion, we'll have our offering plate right up here on front. And when you bring up, come up for communion, you can bring your offering there as well. Let us join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the people of God. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. Holy God, renew your church and raise up leaders who announce your good news. Grant peace to congregations and seminarians in the midst of transition. Guide their work to lead and love. King of kings and Lord of lords, hear our prayers and accept our praise. Almighty God the Father, in mercy you promised to send your people a new king, a righteous king, the shoot from the stump of Jesse's ruined family tree. We give you praise and thanks for Jesus, the righteous branch, the descendant of David's royal line. Jesus, that righteous branch, born in Bethlehem, is king of kings, and he is our king too. As we prepare, we prepare during this Advent season to celebrate his birth, lead us to true repentance. Fill us with the joy and the hope that can only come through knowing Jesus as our Savior and Lord. Hear our prayer in his holy name. King of kings and Lord of lords, hear our prayers and accept our praise. Nurturing God, you came near us in times of worry and need. Cradle us in your arms that we trust you and are not afraid. And tend to anyone who is hungry, imprisoned, or ill this day. Today we especially lift up Tom and Chris and Roger and Sonia, Kirk and Daniel and Terry and Marlis, Whitney, Jamie, Anne and Brent, and Lynn, and those that we now name silently in our own hearts. Grant them healing and wholeness. King of kings and Lord of lords, hear our prayer and accept our praise. God of new life, you come among us in the places that we least expect. Receive these prayers in those of our hearts. In the name of Jesus, amen. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He broke it, and he gave thanks, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. After he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, This is the new covenant of my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, that by this holy communion we may know the unity we share with all your people, in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to Christ's banquet, feast on God's gift of grace. John, I'm hoping you'll help me with communion this morning.
Most high God, you have come among us at this table. By the Spirit's power, form us to be bearers of your word, sharing gifts of your mercy and grace with all through Jesus Christ, our host and our guest. Amen. Let us sing together our blessing. Amen. Our sending hymn is, oh, I do have joy to the world here. That's the problem. Anyways, you guys have hark a glad sound, right? Okay, let's sing hark a glad sound. Okay, you start it. I don't have words. <laughs> we were going round and round this morning on which song was at the end. afterwards here at Kirkabo, Wednesday night, 6.30, cantata here at Kirkabo with Scandinavian treats and others after the serve, or after the cantata. There is no charge for it. It's a free will offering. And then uh, confirmation here today at Kirkabo after the 11 o'clock service. What else? Next Sunday, 9 o'clock here at Kirkabo, 11 o'clock Christmas program for the kids at Nora. There's just so much going on, which is why we're mixing up the bulletins. So let us go in peace. Christ is near. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful week. Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, devotions.